All right, people, welcome back. More card review. So there have been so many newer cards released since uh, last week. So we're not scraping the barrel anymore. We got a whole bunch of new cards. That being said, uh, I was trying to debate on which card to start off with, but I think I should go ahead and start off with this because, as everybody knows, I'm not a fan of Pot of Greed coming back. No, it's it's broken. It's literally broken. So, uh, uh, right after a couple of days later, I think maybe the next day, can I reveal a new pot card? And it's kind of ironic that the pot the pot name this is Pot of Cupidity, that there's actually a fake card for Fake Card Friday like over six months ago with the same exact name. I saw a ton of people coming on a video and being like, you know, oh my god, they predicted the future. It's like, ah, you know, I didn't predict the future. I didn't make the card, but whoever did make the card, I don't really remember. But they, 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 it doesn't have the same effect. I think that card was way more broken than this one, but Pot of Cupidity, same exact name. It's like, how, how, how did you come up with that? But they're, they're from the future. They're from the future. Anyway, uh, we're going to be looking at this card. So you can clearly see by the card art. The Pot of Greed, we've got Pot of Avarice, both cards are banned in the TCG, Pot of Greed's banned in the OCG, but I believe it's at one in the, I mean, it's banned in the TCG, Pot of Greed's banned in the OCG, and Pot of Avarice is legal at one in the OCG, so, very, two very powerful cards, you, you cannot talk about any pot cards without talking about these two, you know, so, yeah, pretty much back to back, and this is Pot of Cupidity, so let's go ahead and see, uh, whether it's good or not, and whether you should run it, so. Uh, fact reads, banish 10 cards from the top of your deck face down. That is the cost. Draw 2 cards. You can only activate the, activate 1 pot of cupidity once per turn. That is a steep cost, and yes, that is a cost. You can't be like, alright, activate pot of cupidity, chain and pair, uh, pair on one. No, you already milled your cost. Like, it's literally, activate pot of cupidity, banish the top 10, then, uh, do you want to play in pair on wall uh, before you draw 2? Like, it's already gone. And if you think that you're going to be cute and flip up Imperial Iron Wall, then you can't play Pot of Cupidity because you can't pay the cost anymore. So you can't, there's really no getting out of the banish the top 10 cards from the top of your deck. Like, there's no getting out of that. Um, that's a, it's just such a steep cost. Like, I, I mean, you go plus one. Yeah, you go plus one. You don't go neg. Like, some people are like, oh, well, you go, like, minus eight. Like, no, that the cards from your deck don't count as resources, you know? So when you banish the top 10 off your deck, Face down from your, that's not, you're not negative on resources, but you play this one card, draw two, resources are your hand and field, you plus one, yeah, you do that, you plus one, it's just like Pot of Greed, you plus one, it's just, ten cards, like, wow, that is steep, uh, and of course, generally, we play four, around 40 card decks, so, I mean, you could go ahead and increase your deck count, but then you decrease the chances of you getting this card, and keep in mind, you're banishing 10 random cards. You do not know what you are banishing. And just like with uh, Ghost Trick Skeleton, you can't touch those cards. Straight up, if we're doing like an Originals or a YCS, you play this card, you banish the top 10 cards of your deck face down, and then you end up touching those cards and picking them up and looking at them just, you know, for fun sakes or just because you feel like it, I can call the judge and I can give you a game loss. Like, you cannot touch those cards. Those cards are pretty much unknown face banish face down is probably one of the most unknown things you know you don't know those cards i don't know those cards did you ban you know for all you know you're trying to draw two and trying to draw into a particular card for all you know you just banish the card you literally just banish 10 cards off of your top of your deck that you have no idea what they are so you're gonna be like oh man well i really need you know my luster pendulum well let me go ahead and activate potty cupidity i'm gonna you know, banish the top cards, 10 cards off my deck, but I'm going to draw two, so I might draw into my luster. For all you know, you just banish your luster. But that is really risky, and you don't know. And you don't know. I mean, there's a couple of cards that can help you out with this matter, but, you know, they're, they're far and few between, so, mm, you know? So, I, I mean, I guess we can go ahead and talk about some of the, the synergies with this card, but from, from just a just a actual standpoint, like, can anybody can, should everybody play this card? Absolutely no. It's so steep. It, you know what? Now how I think of it is, it's a powerful card, but it, its costs and its restrictions are so steep that it's not worth playing. It is. Are you ready for my quote? Pot of cupidity is a solemn scolding of pot. Yes. Is solemn scolding a good card? Yeah, it's a good card. I mean, you pay you pay three thousand life points to stop anything, but it, <coughs> three thousand life points is steep. It's being the only set card is steep. It's pretty much the same boat. This is a pot card. This is literally pot of greed. You know. It's taking the cost out of consideration. This is a pot of green. You know, you play it, you're getting a plus one. Play it, draw two. But 
that restriction, the cost is just so steep that it's just not worth it. You know, it's just not worth it. I think I'll stick with card card B, sir. Like people are like, oh, Potter Reach, come back. You got card card B. I mean, there's restrictions on it, sure, but summon it, tribute it, draw two. That's still a plus one, just like Potter Greed. And I am a turn. I mean, there's gotta be restrictions. You can't just allow Potter Greed just to go free like that. You gotta have something. And this one, this one, it's just, it's just too steep. I mean, at least you get to, you can still smash the summon, you can still conduct your battle phase, you can still do the rest of your turn, you know, unlike what Card Card D or other uh, restricting cards like this would uh, have you do when it comes to pots. But, just top 10, like, I don't know, I don't know. So, uh, of course, you can go ahead and play your Necroface, so. Um, Necroface is at 2 in the TCG, 1 in the OCG. Um, when he's normal summon, you go ahead and take all your banished cards and slap them back and shuffle them back into the deck. You know, even your uh, face down one. So, there you go. So you play, you play your out of community send top ten draw to play necrophase. I mean, who's to say that you didn't know your true necrophases, of course, and they're not going to go off. They're face down. You know, you like, oh well, they'll, they'll be banished like so it's the middle of the top five on both. No, no, chase down. It's not going to go off. So, hopefully, you got your necrophase summon it, put your ten back. Um. You could be cute with those banishing cards, so uh, you can try to do like uh, you know chaos end to kind of dark hole the field, even though dark holes add two. You know, cause it's like if you have like what seven cards banished, you can destroy them on the field. Like eh, we have we have dark hole at two and regeki at one. Like now, uh, golden homunculus and uh, great Majin da Isa uh, gain attack. You know, so you can have like a forty-five to four thousand beater just off of one of these by banishing top. Uh, 10 so if you want to do that it's cute I guess you know you, you can't even really use it in DD deck because you know your DD survivors and your DD scout planes they're they're down they're down they're not up so they're not coming back they're not activating their effects while they're banished they're they're not even cards I mean they're not even specific types of anything you know uh, you know you you don't know if that's a monster or a spell or a trap it's just a card simple as that uh, you can play Soul Absorption, so you Soul Absorption, play this card, bench the top 10, you will gain 5,000 life points, so. Um, you can play uh, Diamond Dude, so you remember, uh, you know, Diamond Dude Turbo and, you know, all that, you can do that. You can go Diamond Dude, and if you go ahead and uh, Diamond Dude effect off the top card of the deck and it's this, then next turn, you will avoid the cost, so you pretty much get a Pot of Greed. Actually, it's even better than that, you straight up get a plus two, because... You're not even using, using even, even using resources from your hand. You should just straight up diamond dude effect. Send that pot of cupidity next turn. Draw two, including my draw phase with no restrictions. Yeah, you could do that. It's just you know who really does diamond dude turbo. And of course, uh, Omega. You know, uh, Cypher and Omega. Can he get you the cards back? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He can go ahead and get you one of your banished cards because it, it doesn't specify. Get you one of your banished cards and put it back in the graveyard. But can you, you know, oh, side frame Omega effect during my opponent's hammer phase. Let me look at my uh, my face down banished cards and, you know, select one. No, you can't do that. Straight up, that would be a game loss. You can just go ahead and be like, all right, Omega effect, spread out the cards randomly, pick one and slap it in the graveyard. Did you get a monster? Did you get a spell? Did you get a trap? I don't know. It doesn't, you know. But uh, I guess you'll find out when you take that that gamble, that one out of ten. And, you know, because I know a couple of people are uh, thinking about playing this in Infernoids, but, you know, those Infernoid monsters, they're, they're gone. They're out. So you can do Omega, and hopefully you can go ahead and, you know, put an Infernoid monster that's been face down back into the graveyard, but, hey, the chances aren't there uh, 100%. So it's risky. I mean, I don't even like the whole... Uh, bamboo sword infernoids, let alone trying to do this. It's just, it's just too cute. So I, I really can't see where a position where this card can actually be in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh or anything along um, doing uh, any relevant plays. It's just, it's just too, it's too, it's too restricting. It really is. So that's my opinion of it. You know, if you want to play, if you want to get a pot of greed, I'd say just play card card B. Just play it, tribute it, draw, draw your plus one, and take your turn and end. That's what I'd say. Because straight up, uh, it's just too much. It's just too much for uh, uh, trying to get a plus one, banishing the top ten cards of your deck. That's just no ow. Maybe five? If they if five, maybe we could talk about ten? No, no, no. So, anyway, tell me what you guys think about Pot of Cupidity in the comment section below. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. I will see you guys on Wednesday, and yes, I, I will go ahead and confirm this, because like I said, there's just so many new cards. We will be looking at Nirvana, because I know I kind of said Nirvana, but I wanted to go ahead and get this card out of the way, because it's just so relevant and so important. When it, I mean, it's a freaking pot. Come on.
and we'll go ahead and look at our first synchro pendulum monster on Wednesday with Nirvana. So anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for the support, and yeah, see you guys on Wednesday.